Ladies and gentlemen, Iowa State Fairgoers. Next up in the Livestock Pavilion, the senior class finalists for the Grand Sweepstakes. That's Blue Boy. We better get our seats. Yes. I have had all I can take. I am washing my hands of that rotten, ungrateful What is it, Abel? What's wrong? That stinking boar has lost his mind, that's what. Here it is, his moment of glory, and he's laying back there in the mud. There's just no getting him out of that pen up on his feet. I prodded. I pleaded. I sang him cow cow boogie. I'm here to tell you, come Saturday supper, we're having one hell of a pork roast. Now calm yourself, Abel. I have every confidence in Blue Boy. Wayne, you gotta do something quick. Come on, Harry. Let's go show that hog who's boss. You bet. If he wants to get tough, so can we. Yes. Now, you know how sensitive Blue Boy is. You harm one bristle on that boar's butt. Oh, Mama, have... this is just terrible. What if Blue Boy loses? We'll have to shoot him. Blue Boy? No, your father. Oh. Whoa there, Bobby Locks. Where's the fire? Oh, Pat, it's just terrible. This is Daddy's big event, and Blue Boy's being temperamental. Wayne and Harry are with him now. Harry's great with animals. How is he with you? What? Do you love him? Uh, I guess I've known Harry forever. We went to kindergarten together and graduated high school together. People always just paired us off. Harry and Margie, Margie. And... He wants to marry me. Well, what do you want? That's a funny question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. Well, now that you mention it, I don't think I've ever asked a girl that question before. I guess you've had a lot of experience with girls. I've done my fair share of running around, if that's what you mean. But you've never been in love? Oh, sure. A hundred times. <laughs> no, I haven't. Look, Bobby Locks, it's the last day of the fair, so I'm going to level with you. I'm not the kind of guy I'd wish on a wonderful girl like you. So you're calling it quits? No, I don't ever want to call it quits with you. How could he do this to me? After all we've meant to each other, after all we've been through together, why would he deliberately want to break my heart? I know how much winning the sweepstakes meant to you, Daddy. And I'd rather plow the back 40 with my face than lose that $5 bet to Dave Miller. Well, are you able? <laughs> If it isn't Hank Munson. Well, if it isn't, his wife doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Say, wasn't that Blue Boy's class they just called? Ah, it looks like Blue Boy won't be competing after all. What are you talking about? He's had some kind of nervous collapse. He's laying back there moaning and wheezing. It's, it's like he's lost his best friend. Oh, well, that's peculiar. When I went back to get Esmeralda for her showing, he was strutting around the pen proud as a peacock. He and Esmeralda were carrying on quite a conversation. Now, hold on. You say Blue Boy was frisky enough when Esmeralda was in her pen right across from him, but when you took her oh, away... Oh, wait a minute. That's it. He's lovesick for my beauteous girl. Come on, Hank. It looks like love really does conquer all. What would that stupid beast possibly know about love? What do any of us know about love? I gotta get going, Pat. Meet me tonight, outside the Dairy Pavilion at 7 o'clock. Anything you say. Anything you say? Well, would you listen to me? <laughs> hey, Pat! We're throwing a shower for Trudy tonight over at the Oasis. Trudy don't get off till midnight, but they're keeping the dump open for us until dawn. Thanks for the invite, ladies, but I've sworn off. Off what? And since when? Off the high life, starting now. You've changed, Bob. You've changed a lot. And the gang you used to go with all concur. You've changed, Bob. You're not yourself. If this is yourself, 
And Amos as a leaf in a gale. Whatever has become of that lighthearted bum who thought he had the world by the tail? The man I used to be, his life was gay and free. And Amos as a cloud in the sky. He thought he knew the game, then along came a dame who turned him into some other guy. I got ambition now, I'm on a mission now. I aim to reach the top of the tree. That other fly by night who flew so high by night has vanished like a sail on the sea. And I'll never find that easy living, easy taking, easy giving fella that I used to call me. You can never find the man you used to be. The man I used to be would go to sleep at 3 or 4 a.m. Or 7 or 9. And when his hairy head wasn't nearly bent, a table or a chair would be fine. A man without a goal, a sort of friendly soul, who liked to play the role of a host. To any thirsty pal Or a casual gal Who stayed to cook his coffee and toast He, he was a ne'er-do-well Who wouldn't dare do well He never saw the top of a tree But kind of sad I am To see the cat I am Dissolving like a sail on the sea And I'll never find that fatalistic Free and easy egotistic optimist Who used to be me you can never find the man you used to be. You know, you used to be a real pissed old Gilbert. And then some skirt wind turned you into a pop gun. Have a lovely evening, ladies. Which means that Blue Boy is the best boar in the state. State nothing. Everybody knows nothing fine as Iowa swine. That makes Blue Boy the best boar in the universe. I can hear the fallen hogs in the clear Iowa air. I can sniff the fragrant whiff of an Iowa rose. You got Iowa in your heart. I got highway in my hair, I got highway in my ears and eyes and nose. Oh, I know, all I owe, I owe, I owe, I owe, 
my way all I owe and I know why. I am Iowa born and bred and on Iowa corn I'm fed, not to mention her barley, wheat and rye. I owe Iowa for her ham and her beef and her lamb and her strawberry jam and her pie.
So he's moved up your interview to first thing tomorrow. We got just enough time to get you on the last train out tonight. No, 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 but I can't leave now. Margie's meeting me here. So you'll find another girl in Chicago. She's not just another girl. And this isn't just another job. This is a chance you've been waiting for, Pat. Now, if you want to throw it away for some girl you've known for two days, that's no skin off my nose. But you better decide fast, because that train's not going to wait. Same old pact. Waiting someone? Uh-huh. Waiting for someone? Uh-huh. I promise not to tell if you don't. Pinky swear? <laughs> Do you want me to wait with him? That's okay, you go ahead. Wayne? Thanks. Maybe we're out for laughs, a girl and a boy Kidding across the table for two But haven't you got a hunch That this is the real McCoy And all the things we tell each other That's the way it happened. That's the way it happened. Before we bid a fond farewell to the fair of 46, please welcome back Emily Arden and Alberto. You're a girl from Chicago on the road with the show. Not a soul in New Haven, you can say you you wish you were a mile or so from Michigan Lake Home with your mother and a T-bone steak <laughs> Then along comes a fellow with a smile like a kid And he gets your attention with a timely bid Says he knows a bistro where they give you a break On French fried potatoes and a T-bone That's the way it happens
beautiful bundle of talent. Talent to the Schuberts. Talent to them nothing. I'll put it on a billboard in Herald Square. Could you move that uptown to Times Square? I'll put one there too. So how long to your next show? No late show tonight. Miss Cornsilk pageant takes over the hall. So you're free? Fancy free. Until 11.30, that is. 11.30? Milwaukee, remember? The bus leaves at 11.30. Tonight? But it's the last night of the fair. I thought, well, I was hoping we could spend it together. We can, until 11.30. Give me a minute to get all these glad rags. Hey, Tiger. Hey, Violet. How about a dance? You're on, kid. <laughs> Just dreaming. About what? Us. The past few days. Sounds like a nice dream. Well, it's getting late. No, please. Just a little longer. We don't have a little longer. Greyhound waits for no man. I'll walk you to the station. No, I think it's best if we say our goodbyes here. We can't say goodbye now, Emily. I, I know. I, I know the, the first rule of show business, but we weren't counting on falling in love. Can't we throw the rules away? No, Wayne, we can't. There's no way Yes, we can. We can if we try. I know we can work it out if we really try. I have tried. I'm married. We haven't seen each other for about a year. He got tired of sitting at home while I went out on the road. We spent two and a half years of our marriage trying to find a weekend together. The last time I left, he said if I walked out that door, he wouldn't be there when I got back. And you know what? I never got back. I won't let that happen to you, Wayne. I don't like seeing nice guys taken advantage of. It might be different for you this time, with me. No, Wayne, I know what I'm good at. I'll never make a great wife, but I might make a great entertainer. Could you look at it this way? Three days ago, you came to the fair and you didn't even know a girl named Emily. And then we met and we took a trip to the moon and returned to Earth. Does that put you ahead or behind? Always leave them laughing. That North Star is the one that'll lead us home tomorrow. Which one? You don't know that? Tell me again. <laughs> See the Big Dipper? Mm -hmm. Take those last two stars in the bowl, mm -hmm. and right beyond them, a little to the left, that's the North Star. My grandfather set his fences on that star. Nights like this make me feel like we're the only two people in the world. <laughs> and sitting right here on top of it, too. I can't wait to see the look on Dave Miller's face tomorrow after supper. <laughs> Both of us victorious, Margie and Wayne having the time of their lives. You know, I haven't seen Margie and Wayne since supper. 
Calm yourself, Mother. It's the last night of the fair. You know, we're going to have to start giving some thought to letting loose the reins of those two. I'm worried about Margie. She promised Harry she'd give him an answer after the fair. And I'm afraid it's not going to be the one he's been counting on. Then what? Then she'll marry somebody else. Why, sure. One day, Margie will come running home all in a tizzy about some new fella she's met. And ain't he the cat's whiskers? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what always happens? They walk on every village street. They walk in lanes where branches meet. And stars send down their blessings from the moon. Go through storms of doubt and fear, and so they go from year to year, believing in each other as we do. Bravely marching forward two by two, boys and girls like you and me walk beneath the skies they love just as we love with the same dream in their eyes songs and kings and many things have their day and are gone but boys and like you and me, we go on and on. Well, here it is, the moment every mother dreads. The children have grown up, and somehow I didn't notice. I'm just so used to treating them like my babies. And it's such a hard habit to break. That it is. But just think, Mother, pretty soon we'll be right back where we started. I'll have you all to myself again. <laughs> Boys and girls like you and me walk beneath the skies. They love just as we love with the same dream in their eyes. So and kings and many things have their day and are gone. But boys and girls like you and me Harry? Is Margie back yet? She and Wayne are still walking the midway. It's getting pretty late. I think the fair is over. Well, I guess I'll take a stroll. When Margie gets back, could you tell her I need to talk to her? Of course. Harry, would you like some company? I'll walk you part way. Uh-oh. Waldo Emerson. I suppose you think I've been drinking. <laughs> Not till you mentioned it. <laughs> well, I had to. I'm drinking to forget. Is it working? No. Never does. I'll never forget, Eleanor. I mean, Emily. Oops, a little slip of the tongue. Oh, no. How could I be so stupid? I think I made an ass of myself. Well, men have been making fools of themselves over women ever since Adam and Eve. I don't expect that to end anytime soon. So this Emily gal treated you pretty rough, huh? Yeah, she made me feel... 
No. We had a wonderful time. A ride to the moon. Well, son, when you fly that high, it most often ends in a bumpy landing. I don't feel so good. You don't look so good. What say we walk it off and talk it over? Come on, put your arm around your old man's shoulder. That's it. Pop, do you think Eleanor will ever forgive me? It might be best not to bother Eleanor with all the particulars. Sometimes it's more important just to forgive yourself. late to be out here all by your lonesome. I was meeting someone. I guess he got held up. Yeah, held up and tied down. She's been staying over by the dairy pavilion all night. <laughs> well, you get home safe now. I will. Thank you. Well, that about does her. Yep. Next stop, 1947. Well, Pat, it's not like you didn't warn me. He said any time you wanted to call it quits, he just wouldn't be around. I leapt before I looked and I got hooked. I played with fire and burned, that's how I learned. I must admit, I owe a lot to you. From now on, I will know what not to do. The next time it happens, I'll be wise enough to know. What a foolish thing to say. Who expects a miracle to happen every day? It isn't in the cards, as far as I can see, that a thing so beautiful and wonderful could happen more than once to me. Marge? Watching him take down the fair. It's so magical when you first see it, all lit up and in motion. Then it all comes apart, and it's nothing like you thought it was. Nope, it's all just a bunch of canvas and plywood. <laughs> Harry, I promised you an answer after the fair. I know how much you care about me, and I care about you too. I really do. But I can't marry you. I'm sorry, Harry. Sorrier than you can imagine. You're a terrific guy. If I'm so terrific, then why won't you marry me? Just tell me what you want. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. There's nothing you can do. What have I done wrong? You haven't done anything wrong. Then is there somebody else? No. Then marry me. I can't. Don't you see, Harry? I'm not in love with you. I guess somehow I always knew that. 
but I figured if I stuck around long enough, you'd grow to love me. I guess I'm the kind of guy who needs to be hit in the head with the frying pan before he gets the message. But I got it now, loud and queer. And here's some news for you, Miss Margie Frake. There'll come a day when you'll be good and sorry you let me get away. I would have given you everything. Goodbye, Harry. Well, I'll be breaded and deep fried. Mother, get out here. We're famous. Why does he do this to me? He knows I can't hear him when I'm in the dining room. What on earth are you hollering about out here? Get a load of this. I owe a pride, a prize winning family. My star's now to us. Look, there's that picture of you winning the plaque. Oh, Picture you and the fellows after Blue Boy won. And look, a picture of Margie. <laughs> that newspaper fellow really got around. You said a mouthful. Listen to this. But it was their youngest, Miss Margaret Elizabeth Frake, who guided me into the heart of her family. Whether clutching her mother's arm in support of her mincemeat, or consoling her father when things looked dark as far as Hampshire bore. Margie represents what remains remarkable about the American family. Win, place, or show, they were all in it together. Margie, come see. We're in the newspaper. Look, a big article by that Gilbert fella and a picture of you. Uh, when did he? I don't know why you'd put a stupid picture of me in the paper. I didn't win anything. You knew this article was in the pipeline all along. I didn't know. Honest, I didn't. You see, Mr. Gilbert approached me the first day of the fair and asked if, well, if he could spend some time with me. But I didn't know it was to, why, of course. He wanted to write about one family's experience at the fair without them knowing. So he used me. I guess it turned into something more than I thought it would. I'll say, it's spread over two whole pages. Wait till Dave Miller catches wind of this. He's going to spit six penny nails. Think of the devil. I hope he's got a fiver on him he's ready to part company with. 